afternoon, everyone. It is Sunday, December 22nd, 2019. We're on the eve of Hanukkah. And Hanukkah, yes, begins tonight at sundown. And as with the other festivals, the other feasts that we talked about, like in the fall, when we talked about Rosh Hashanah, we talked about Yom Kippur, we talked about Sukkot, all of the holidays begin on sundown from sundown of the previous evening to sundown of the next day. So that's the same with Hanukkah. Now Hanukkah is gonna last for eight days. And some years Hanukkah is before Christmas and some years they overlap. And this year is a very interesting year um, because we overlap big time. Um, so we're starting tonight with Hanukkah. Christmas Eve is on Tuesday, which is the 24th of December. and um, the 25th, of course, is Wednesday, which is Christmas. And Hanukkah is going to, of course, continue because Hanukkah is for eight days. And the last day of Hanukkah actually starts at sundown on the 29th into sundown of the 30th of December. And then right the next day, we're into New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. So it's a very interesting year. So I'm hoping this recording gets my first two attempts at this um, did not work. Um, and, and well, actually more than two attempts. I had a couple of flat line, but nothing was showing that it was recording. And then I had two previous attempts at trying to do this. And I sounded like I had, uh, I, I sounded like I was a chipmunk talking in high speed. So I don't know what was going on with this online recorder, but I'm praying that it works this time. As with all, all of my recordings, all of my teachings, I, I asked Father God I, to, to be my guide, the Holy Spirit to come and guide me in the teaching, because that is the best way to actually convey what needs to be conveyed to you, and it's what the Holy Spirit actually wants. So, Father God, thank you so much for, for being present with us today, for bringing your Holy Spirit, for guiding this teaching, for, for blessing everyone who listens to this teaching, that they may understand what Hanukkah is, what how it represents um, dedicating um, oneself to you, um, and actually how it all came about. Um, and I thank you, Father God, um, for your presence in this teaching. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus, amen and amen. Now, Hanukkah is in the month of Kislev, and actually the 25th, of Kislev actually on our calendar lines up with December 23rd. But as I said, um, we begin the holidays on the sun, the sundown of the previous day. So that is what will be happening today. So most people think of Hanukkah, they, 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 they think of the dreidels, the, the Hanukkah songs, the menorah, um, and there's a lot more involved to it uh, than that. I'm going to kind of just touch on it. Uh, because there's a whole bunch of history that is involved. But I am going to start with history of the menorah, because that goes even further back than the Maccabean period, which where Hanukkah was actually evolved from. But the menorah was part of, of the history um, of, of the children of Israel, because actually, after they were, after they came out of exile, out of captivity of Egypt, they were in the wilderness, and God gave Moses the instructions for the tabernacle. And one of the furnishings in the tabernacle is the seven branch candlestick, which is known as the menorah. And, and, and this is placed in the middle section of the tabernacle. We have the outer court first, and then we have the holy place and then the holy of holies. In the middle section is where you have your, your shoe, table of shoe bread, show bread. Um, and uh, directly across from that, if you were walking into it, would be on the left side, across across from the table of show, showbread, would be your seven branch candlestick. And then in front of that would be your, in front, I'm, I'm, I'm like, if I'm walking in there, I'm facing directly to the, the altar of incense, which is before you would get into the Holy of Holies. So that is in the holy place. Just not every ordinary person could actually go in there. Only the priest could go into the holy place uh, when that they were out in the wilderness and they were taking the tabernacle along with them in their travels in the wilderness. 
So yes, the menorah goes all the way back there to that period of time. So we can actually go to Exodus chapter 25. And in Exodus 25, beginning with verse 31, it is all about this candlestick, the menorah. And I'm, I'm reading from this, I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. And it begins, and thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold, of beaten work shall the candlestick be made. His shaft and his branches, his bowls, his knots, and his flower shall be of the same. And six branches shall come out of the sides of it, three branches of the candlestick out of the one side, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side. Three bowls made like unto almonds with a knob and a flower in one branch, and three bowls made like almonds in the other branch with a knob and a flower. So in the six branches that come out of the candlestick, and in the candlestick shall be four bowls made like unto almonds with their knobs and their flowers. And there shall be a knob under two branches of the same, and a knob under two branches of the same, and a knob under two branches of the same, according to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick. Their knobs and their branches shall be of the same. All it shall be one beaten work of pure gold. And thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it. And the tongs thereof, and the snuff dishes thereof, shall be of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold shall he make it with all these vessels. And look, that thou make them after their pattern, which was shewed thee in the mount. So God had showed, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Moses the pattern of exactly how the temple tabernacle i'm sorry should be and it was actually patterned after heaven how it is in heaven so this had to be specifically made as per god's instructions and there was an interpretation of the seven branches and that they represented the, the creation the seven days the six days that god did his work and on the seventh day he rested so that's a, an interesting interpretation of it. So yeah, the original menorah is seven branched. Now, when we are talking about the Hanukkah menorah, actually mine is nine branched. There's a center and then there's four on each, on each side. And I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. Um, when the first temple, and this would have been Solomon's temple, um, was when it was built in Jerusalem, there was a large menorah that was erected in that temple. And the priest lit the menorah in the temple every evening and cleaned it every morning, replacing the wicks and putting fresh olive oil into, into the cups. So the light of the menorah symbolizes an eternal flame. It has been said that the menorah is a symbol of the nation of Israel and its mission to be a light unto the nations. Isaiah 42, verse 6 says, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles. In other words, that the children of Israel, the nation of Israel, would be a light to the nations, to the Gentiles. So the menorah is among the most widely produced articles of Jewish ceremonial art. And the seven branch menorah is a traditional symbol, symbol of Judaism. And it's an emblem of the state of Israel. So now I mentioned also, uh, there's a nine branch candelabrum menorah, which is exactly what I have for Hanukkah. My menorah is, is nine branched. Um, there's a center one that stands up higher than the others, and that is called the shamash, or the helper, or the servant, and that this is the candle that is used to actually light all the others. So it is on, on a different level of the other eight candles. So there's four other candles on either side of, of the shamash candle. So on the first night, the shamash candle will be lit, and then there'll be the far there'll be the candle on the far right will be lit tonight. That's the only candle that will, that will be lit, and there'll be three blessings read on the very first night. Um, and then on each successive night, you're adding a candle to it until you, till the eighth on the eighth night you have the whole the whole menorah is lit. 
And the light of the menorah can be seen to represent any and all of the following. The light represents the goodness in the story of Genesis as God separated light and darkness on the first day of creation. That's in Genesis 1, verse 1. And beginning, and also beginning with ancient Israelites, the light of Torah has guided us throughout our history, including many dark times. And as in the story of the underdog victory of the Maccabees, which we're going to talk a little bit about in a, in a bit, a small ray of light can overcome vast darkness. And the shamash, the light of the shamash can be interpreted as God's helping hand in partnership with human action. And the menorah light is supposed to be enjoyed and not used for study or work of any manner. Gazing at the menorah reminds us of the miracles of daily life, including light itself. Now, I mentioned Yeshua, Jesus, actually participated in Hanukkah. And not in every Bible is the word, actually, Hanukkah stated. It could be Festival of Lights, Feast of Dedication. Um, in the Jewish, in the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, it does say Hanukkah. So here in the King James Version of the Bible, in, in John chapter 10, starting with verse 22, it says, and it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of Dedication, and it was winter, and Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. That same two verses in the NIV says, Then came the Feast of Dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple area walking in Solomon's colonnade. The NASB says, At, the, at that time, the Feast of Dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. The Passion Translation says, Jesus at the Feast of Renewal. They call it the Feast of Renewal in this Bible. Um, the time came to observe the Winter Feast of Renewal in Jerusalem. Jesus walked into the temple area under Solomon's covered walkway. And the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, the Tree of Life version, says, Then came Hanukkah. It was winter in Jerusalem. Yeshua was walking in the temple around Solomon's colonnade. So, yes. Hanukkah is in the Bible. It is biblical. However, it is not an appointed, it's not one of the appointed seven feasts that God commanded for all generations. It, but it is in the Bible. It is uh, something that Jesus participated in himself. Now, Hanukkah can be spelled H A N U K K A H, or also can be seen as Hanukkah, C H A N U K A H. It's also called the Festival of Lights. It is a lesser festival that occurs, like I said, in December, Kislev 25 on the Hebrew calendar. This holiday lasts eight days. It commemorates the rededication of the temple in 165 BC by the Maccabees after it had been destroyed by the Syrians. It celebrates the triumph of lightness over darkness, spiritualism over materialism, and purity over adultery. It is also known as the Feast of Dedication. And as you saw in some Bibles, it is actually called that. And it's of dedicating oneself to Father God. So in, on one, one candle on each successive night is lit with a special reading to Father God, giving thanks to the mighty God of the universe. So what I want to mention, too, and I mentioned earlier that there are three blessings that are actually read on the first night. And on, on the successive nights, after that, there's two blessings and, it, and a successive candle is actually lit. The other thing I want to mention before we continue on is I also mentioned that it, it lines up, Kislev 25 lines up with, with the calendar December 23rd. That's not every year. That is just for this year of 2019. So I just wanted to make that, that, that clear that this does not happen every year. And I also want to mention that, you know, as, as we know, Yeshua did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. So he was participating in Hanukkah. And I would say that that would be pretty important to us to look at, too, because if our Lord and Savior is actually showing us and he's an example to us and he is participating in it. So it it, it would uh, venture to for us to say that maybe we should be looking into that too if we're not and 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 actually coming to an understanding of what Hanukkah really is and I'm going to actually pause that pause the recording now uh, and go on to part two of this and I'm going to get into some of the history 
Um, so we have an understanding of how this all came about in the first place.